Don't tell me I've got a mission already. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm fine, babe. This place is dangerous. Take my hand. Yes, ma'am. You ain't gotta tell me twice. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> Let's go fight some monsters, guys. Bro, what is this slide now? Nah, what is this slide down the... Bruh. This the most... This the most dramatic slide down the... What? <laughs> That's fire! But apparently there's some bullshit going on with like IGN. They wrote an article. Let's read it. Let's read what he's got to say. It's not new. The other games have chosen to highlight the strengths of their female characters, but where Bayonetta stands out with an iconic character design or even 2B with Nier Automa inspires an entire generation of cosplayers. Eve from Stellar Blade is just bland, a doll sexualized by someone who's never seen a woman. Hey! Ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit, oh. man. Brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? You see, this is why nobody takes gaming journalism seriously. As a journalist, they are strict do's and don'ts that you are meant to abide by. Under the don't section, we have do not be biased. Never insert your opinion into a news or regular feature article. Number two, don't be one-sided. Number three, do your research. Number four, do use multiple sources. Five, stick to the facts, not conjecture. This guy right here has broken every single don't rule in the book regarding journalism. And you're insulting someone and you still want to be taken seriously. You still think that you get to keep your journalistic integrity when you are hurling insults at a person. How does that work? Okay, and fine, let's say that you weren't insulting the person. Let's say you were stating a fact. Okay, then tell us what's your source for stating that he doesn't know what a woman looks like. Where did you get that? How do you know that? I don't, I don't know. But unfortunately, gaming journalism cannot be taken seriously because these people don't take it seriously. There are no consequences for gaming journalists. No one is fired because they insulted somebody or they did something that was out of pocket. There are no states involved. I mean, that's how you end up with brain dead takes like these in 2024. But all of this doesn't account for Resident Evil 5's most notorious problem. Racism. Set in a fictional West African country, Resident Evil 5's primary antagonists are black people. Yes, it's technically the Ouroboros virus that protagonist Chris Redfield is fighting. But the Parasite's host is depicted as a nation of mobs and primitives who are violent even before their infection. Intentionally or not, Resident Evil 5 positions Africa as the Dark Continent, an uncivilized world harboring a diseased population that needs gunning down via Western intervention in the name of global security. In the 2020s, in a post-Black Lives Matter world, there is only one acceptable response to a white man shooting waves of Africans for an entire video game. No. You see, this is why. This is why we can't have nice things, Barry. You ask- I wanna highlight some of my favorite comments that IGN got because of that stupid take. As a native Nigerian, y'all really gotta stop being offended for us. Resident Evil 4, Spaniard enemies, thumbs up. Resident Evil 5, African enemies, thumbs down. Garbage take in 2009, garbage take in 2024. Can't agree more. <laughs> this is my favorite comment. <laughs> so zombies should be what in Africa? Irish? <laughs> Look. We're in the home of the enemy, Kathleen! Michael! Hey, a thousand years, Just Kathleen. enjoy your holiday, Michael! Give me Michael. the camera and a trace of me! Michael, Good Michael, there's no me! There's cunts. no... It's in Africa. It's been in Antarctica. It's been, I think, in Spain. It's been in the Midwest. It wasn't racist then. Why should it be racist now? It's in Africa. 
Have fun with the game. Play the game. <laughs> Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League Season 1 is one of the biggest fumbles I've seen in a minute. Remember how they were boasting about the fact that like, oh, Joker is going to be free, all the new upcoming players completely free. What they failed to mention was the fact that they were going to reset your level to zero and to unlock him, you have to grind to level 35 before you can even unlock him. Or, of course, you can pay $10 in the shop. Perfect. Just perfect. And honestly, I can't wait to see how many of y'all defend this. But don't worry, it gets worse. You know how they mentioned there was going to be new activities, specifically the Stronghold? It is quite literally the same exact missions as beforehand, just it looks Joker themed now. There is no new missions. And after grinding for several hours to unlock Joker, you of course have to fight Brainiac beforehand, and let me guess, it's a new boss probably, right? Of course not. Of course it's not. Don't worry, this time the Brainiac fight is just the Green Lantern one reskinned. And it's infuriating because the Joker's gameplay is genuinely solid. I think he has great movement. Like why? I cannot stand when people say that stuff is free and then they take away your progress and make you regrind and not to mention the same freaking missions we played in the original game. Didn't even have the decency to give us new missions or even a freaking new boss. It's another reskin. You know what? I'm one of those guys that anytime news about Suicide Squad comes up and it's terrible my cold heart just gets a nice warm feeling about it i'm so, i just get so happy because it just reminds me that you know what when gamers say they don't want something you better take them seriously when they say that go play arkham asylum go play arkham city re-explore those awesome memories that we had back in the 2013s and 2010s go explore how beautiful that time was it's still good, man. It's still beautiful. These guys need to pay for what they've done. And that's what's going on here. This is reckoning for them. It's facts! It's facts! These are not facts. These guys are not facts. Just one guy and no one else <laughs> is the XP. Hey. Carrying too much damage is hindered. What do you mean too much? Are you serious? <sighs> Alright, what do we drop? Seriously, where did I get all of this? Where did I get a water heater? <laughs> uh, drop that. Useless, useless. Holy fuck. God, this guy is deaf. Well, he doesn't have ears for the Hey, nice, thanks, Dev. Really cool. <laughs> of another tweet, and she's the global head of marketing at Xbox. She says, raise your hand if you're not a white man and you buy video games. And she says, no hate to white dudes. It's just another day in the gaming industry where minorities have to prove that they exist. Shut up, bitch! I just don't understand how the marketing global head of Xbox is still employed. How do you jump on Twitter and start spewing the most racist garbage and you're still employed? How? 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 I don't know! I mean, guy, Xbox is a brand, man. You were supposed to be making Xbox look good and instead you're over here dividing the fan base and making it look as if Xbox is okay with racists. You should be fired. Like, I don't even go as far as to say blacklisted, but you know what? Maybe she made a mistake. Maybe she made a mistake. Okay, maybe she doesn't need to be blacklisted from the industry, but at the bare minimum, you should be fired for saying that. He ain't lying. Not too long ago, I made a video about Danny LaLanders, the woman that openly admitted that she discriminates against white people when developing projects. I have a team of 21 right now. Who is your team? Validate has a team of all people of color. We have no white people on our team. I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like you. At the time of my video, she was working on the upcoming Black Panther video game with Cliffhanger Games, which is a sub-studio of Electronic Arts. But I have a sneaking suspicion that Cliffhanger Games got the memo, because as of March 2024, she no longer works there. That's what I'm talking about! Recently, Danny has actually had some comments about the situation as a whole. She said, I stopped taking y'all seriously when y'all started saying that white people could experience racism. Which is funny because after that tweet, somebody called her out and she says, you know what? Yeah, I'm racist. So now what? Weird flex, but okay. She then says, if you think you can be racist to white people, you're literally the racist one. 
the sheer fucking hubris. Followed up by racism and prejudice are not the same thing. Racism is systemic. White people are not systemically affected negatively by racism. Okay, Danny, let's go down this line of pretending that racism is not literally a category of prejudice. Even if the term racism was exclusively systemic or institutional, she would be defeating her own point. Because whether it's Veritable Joy Studios or Cliffhanger Games, these are organizations, aka institutions, that are working with this woman that has gone on record to say that she would prefer not to work with any white people at all. But not only does she just have that preference, she's already succeeded in executing that preference. In this institution, she literally works with a team that actively seeks to exclude white people simply based on them being white. Flip the races, and this is literally her definition of racism. She got your ass. You have African-American rappers saying inward this and inward that, but a Caucasian can't. So say it. Say what? Say the word you want to say. I'm not saying that I want to say it. I'm just saying that I can't. Sure you can. Say it. Say it right now. <sighs> I will say it with you. Oh. Yeah, boy. Anyway, as usual, thank you, you awesome, fantastic people for tuning in and for uh, liking and subscribing and supporting my content, giving my life a bit of meaning. Remember, stay frosty and VWIW. Vote with your wallet.